Safe Life Defense released a new body armor. It's the thinnest that they've ever made, and they asked me, the fattest reviewer that they know, to take a look at it. I think they wanted the thinnest on the thickest. Yeah, that's what's up. I always talk about being armored, whether it's backpack armor, body armor, or even something a little bit more abstract, the armor of self-confidence. <laughs> I don't have that. Can I buy it? How much? No, for real though. The Hyperline armor is the thinnest that I've ever seen. It's one fifth of an inch thick or 0.19 inches thick. That's the same as five pennies stacked flat ways or a number two pencil. It's level 3A or HG2, which is gonna be the new classification. It weighs five pounds for the panels or six pounds for the whole get up, including their concealable carrier. It covers the front, the back, and the sides fully for a huge swap of protection. And I guess that it's positively buoyant, meaning it floats. I didn't actually test that because it's body armor, not a life jacket. I'll be honest, when I took it out of the package, I didn't really have a whole lot of faith because we have defeated a ton of body armor and this stuff is thinner by more than half of anything we've ever tested before. So I went to the range and I shot at it. What do you think it'll stop? Leave a comment right now. I tested on two of the extra thick rubber dummies back to back. They weigh about 120 pounds and they provide a great human an analog to test bulletproof vests because they have plenty of mass to catch that energy. In a minute, notice the dummies movement when the rounds hit them. Those soft panels really spread out that impact really well. I threw our usual gauntlet at the armor. 22 LR, nine millimeter full metal jacket, nine millimeter self-defense, 45 ACP and 45 self-defense, 38 special 357 out of a lever action rifle, 454 casual, birdshot, and a big ass shotgun slug. And it stopped it all. I expected it to be brief by now. I guess we'll do a slow. It stopped everything. It stopped everything. At that point, I was annoyed, so I unleashed the Krakens. I mean, machine guns. I decided that I was gonna defeat this armor no matter what happened. So first of all, I took a full auto Glock 17 and I emptied a 17 round mag directly in his chest. Only one of those rounds missed. I was at about 20 feet. The one I missed was I believe the first one out of the magazine and the rest of them went in a nice defensively accurate circle, center mass. So I said, hey, you know what? We'll grab the MP5, throw some nine millimeter in that. 30 rounds right in the exact same place that I put those Glock rounds. Didn't go through that either. So I said, well, let's do the exact same thing once again. You know, the definition of insanity. So I took another 30 round mag, put it in the MP5, and unleashed exactly in the same area. Because I had stacked over 70 rounds in the exact same area, a couple finally went through. So I'd say that's a pretty good test. But I was actually kind of annoyed because normally I bring so much stuff that I get through it much sooner than that. A couple things to note, I saw much less back face deformation on this than I have seen on a lot of other soft armor. Several soft armor panels that I've tested in the past actually failed to stop 454 Casul. And I do want to point out that while it did stop the shot shotgun slug from about 20 feet away. The slug did penetrate that dense rubber dummy about two inches. That's gonna cause massive tissue trauma. I was genuinely frustrated because it stopped all the stuff that I brought. So a couple days later, I headed back to the range with some things that I definitely thought would go through. That day I brought out 44 Magnum, 5.7 FN, and some 22 TCM. The 5.7 and 22 TCM because I know they have really fast velocities and speed beats armor. And yeah. It stopped all three of them, 5.7, 22 TCM, and again, the 44 Magnum, which I expected it to stop the 44 Magnum, but the other two, I was absolutely surprised. Hey, if you like this shirt, you can buy it. The link is in the description. So I called the testing done and I headed back for analysis. The Hyperline uses several different materials that I could see as I took it apart. And I will honestly say that I haven't seen any soft panels assembled quite like this. The panels were really meshed together and challenging to separate. That's not something that I always see. And I will also say, do not cut the Dyneema with your scissors because it only takes once and then your scissors are trash. At the end of pulling all the bullets out of the vest, I ended up with one pound, 4.2 ounces of shrapnel. Seriously impressive. That is a lot to put in the soft panel. Here's my pros and cons. The pros, weight. Being super light means you're gonna be able to carry it farther, faster, longer, and maybe carry more ammunition or guns or whatever it is that you're carrying in addition to wearing the body armor. The thinness means that it's almost gonna be concealable. Even for me under a t-shirt, it's not something that you just immediately be like, oh, he's wearing body armor. I just look like I'm double fat that day, you know, 
know, just retaining water, whatnot, right? And because of the weight, the thinness, and the concealability, I can totally see myself wearing this way more often and way longer than I would be able to wear some heavier body armor. The coverage is great too. It covers your whole front, your whole back, and the sides. And that is a huge swath of protection. Bullet stopping. I have tested a ton of panels and this outperformed all of them. Berry compliant. That means that the materials are sourced in the United States and the manufacturing is done in the United States and it's all US made right here in the United States of America. The cons. It's pricey at $999. I understand that. But I personally feel like the performance is worth the cost. To me, that provides a really good value. But that's totally up to you. And they do have a four pay option if that's something that you're interested in. So many people want to complain about things that are made overseas. So here we have something that's very compliant. All the materials are sourced and manufactured in the United States. The manufacturing process done in the United States. This stuff costs money when it's made here in the United States. You bitched about it, so now it's time to knuckle up and put your wallet where your mouth is. I do, that, is, that, is that even actually a saying? It doesn't make any sense to me. US made means that it's going to cost more, so just STFU as you type out your complaints on your China made phone. And the last con is that right now it's not NIJ certified. Now Safe Life Defense didn't tell me any of this. I actually went out and researched it on my own, which you can easily do too. It's all publicly available information. This armor is tested to NIJ standards by Oregon Ballistic Laboratories. Wait a minute, let me back up real quick. To be NIJ certified, armor has to be tested to publish standards at a lab approved by the Criminal Justice Testing and Evaluation Consortium, which is a program of the National Institute of Justice, or NIJ, who maintains a list of approved laboratories for NIJ ballistic and stab standards. Oregon Ballistic Laboratories is one of three, three approved laboratories for ballistic testing by the National Institute of Justice. So one of three laboratories approved to do the testing, tested at that same laboratory to those same standards. Again, doesn't have the NIJ certification. I'm just trying to lay this all out there for you. You have to make your own choices. To wrap it up, this outperformed my expectations by a huge margin. You can combine these soft panels with their FRAS plates, which are level three, and basically create a package that ICW or in conjunction with is gonna stop almost everything under a 30-06 to include 762x39556 and 762x54R. It just became my go-to setup in one of their tactical enhanced multi-threat carriers. That's a mouthful. That's what your mom said. <laughs> Not to me though. I'm damn impressed. I want to hear from you. What do you think of this package? What do you think of the video? What do you think of this armor? What do you think of my pros and cons? Leave it in the comments for me. And also, if you think that this video earned it, give me a subscription. Uh, not to Men's Life, because that's just really sad. Looking at all those fit people, hate it. And I want to wrap this up by saying, hey, get off the couch, go find some adventure, and I dang well hope that I see you out there. Oh, you know, I can do this. Let's do, oh, I can play music.